low oil prices and high spending has rapidly drained Saudi Arabia's cash reserve. And as fossil fuels become relics of the past, the economies of oil-producing nations will diminish as well. To avert this catastrophe, the Saudi leadership promptly designed an unprecedented plan to diversify the kingdom's economy beyond petroleum. Although the intention is appreciated by the international community, the Vision 2030 initiative is not without its geo-economic considerations. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Headed by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi Vision 2030 project came into existence at the backdrop of the Arab Spring. The speed at which the revolutions and rebellions spread throughout the Middle East caught the House of Saud by surprise. And when protests erupted in the country's eastern cities, where much of the Shia community is situated, the government in Riyadh cracked down on dissidents while it ramped up social spending. The carrot and stick policy allowed the state to pacify the resistive communities. However, the $93 billion that was poured into social spending could only be maintained if the price of crude oil remained at about $100 per barrel. Yet, at that time, oil prices were about $55 per barrel. As a result, the budget deficit grew swiftly, while the Saudi foreign exchange reserve decreased steadily. It became evident that the situation was not sustainable due to the demographics. The fact of the matter is that, since about 60% of the Saudi population is under 25 years, the number of working adults in the country is set to surge over the next decade. So even if the price of oil increased, it would not be sufficient to secure the long-term economic prospects of the kingdom. The government needed to reduce its spending and increase domestic revenues from sources beyond oil production. In other words, it was time for a change. To that end, in 2016, the government unveiled the Vision 2030 project. At heart, the initiative promised to step back from the present relationship the government has with the public where the state provides all the services and resources the citizens need at very little cost in exchange for near-complete control over the society. The effort to move away from this social contract is neither easy nor appreciated by the public. For instance, the government's recent increase of various taxes and prices for services has raised living costs in the country. In addition, the Vision 2030 initiative stipulates the downsizing of the public sector and the empowerment of the private sector in the economy. Yet, considering the fact that nearly 70% of the kingdom's labor pool is employed in the public sector, Saudi citizens are not thrilled with the proposed reforms of the Vision 2030 initiative. At this stage, it's too early to judge the success of the project. Since the start of 2018, the government has fallen back on its old habits of spending, thanks to the improved oil prices. As such, the urgency for reform has slowed down. Still, there is progress in some areas, and many more changes are likely to unfold in the coming years. Some of the more acclaimed specifications of Vision 2030 is the promise to boost employment in the private sector and to triple non-oil revenues through taxes and fees. To accomplish this, Vision 2030 proposes to reduce all kinds of social subsidies while implementing labor and social reforms that would increase the participation of women in the workforce. Meanwhile, to open the country's private sector to foreign investment, Riyadh plans to invest in retail, finance, construction, healthcare, tourism, defense, mining, petrochemical and manufacturing. A central component of the initiative is Saudi Aramco. More specifically, to acquire the necessary investment funds, the government wants to put up the state-owned Saudi Aramco for initial public offering. Only then will the Vision 2030 project truly start. Once the IPO reaches a valuation of $2 trillion, the government plans to sell about 5% of Saudi Aramco on public stock markets. This would generate the Saudis roughly $100 billion. However, there is great skepticism over the valuation of Saudi Aramco, with many estimating the value to be about $1.5 trillion. So to get the necessary funds, 
Riyadh would end up selling additional shares of Saudi Aramco's assets. In addition, the government's hope that 5% will fetch $100 billion is not sufficient for the economic reforms. In fact, it's just enough to balance the flow of money draining from the Saudi reserve, but there won't be enough money left to invest in private industries. As such, to address the financial shortcomings and still have enough funds to invest, the kingdom would have to sell additional shares of Saudi Aramco's assets. Beyond funding, the Vision 2030 project seeks to ramp up the share of the private sector in the overall economy, which at the present sits a little over 20% of the total GDP. Some industries, such as defense and tourism, will likely surge in the coming years. Religious tourism is already at an all-time high. With about $22 billion in annual revenues, tourism is the second largest source of income in the kingdom. It's also expected to rise by another $10 billion in the next few years, and this number could further increase if the Saudi government reformed its visa system for travelers. As for its defense industry, Saudi Arabia is one of the biggest military spenders in the world. Yet the country has no domestic defense industry. As such, for years, the Saudis have procured arms from Western nations. To that end, the Vision 2030 initiative seeks to change this by bolstering the indigenous manufacture of weapons thereby reducing military spending and creating jobs at the same time. These reforms are likely to succeed in the coming years. In other industries, however, Saudi Arabia has its limits. Many of the specified industries are already adequately advanced in the country, such as mining and petrochemicals. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia is unlikely to grow into a regional medical hub as it aspires, since more sophisticated facilities already exist in the nearby region. Altogether, it means that the roadmap to ramp up private industrial output will work in some areas, but fail in other fields. Another complication for the Vision 2030 initiative is that the projections are based on Western models and do not consider the work ethics in the Saudi society, where about 80% of the jobs in the private sector are filled by foreign workers from South and Southeast Asia. So even though Vision 2030 could technically create more economic opportunities, most Saudi citizens will not be eager to take up labor-intensive jobs since they have grown accustomed to high-paying jobs in the public sector. Therefore, to truly employ the Saudi youth in the private sector, the leadership in Riyadh will have to take the time to educate its people and cultivate better work ethics among its public. This attitude adjustment will take far longer than the current schedule for 2030. Yet, for the sake of argument, let's assume that somehow the Saudi youth agreed to work in the labor-intensive sectors. And, as promised, Saudi Vision 2030 doubled the GDP, created 6 million jobs, and increased the household income by 60%. Basically, everything went down as planned. On paper, the economic project would have improved the livelihood of all citizens, including the minorities. In practice, however, the Saudi leadership will not risk their relationship with the clerics of the Wahhabi community, who will try to restrain the role of Shia officials, merchants, businessmen and clerics in the overall Saudi society. Thus, no matter how far-reaching Saudi Vision 2030 goes, it will not resolve the country's sectarian divisions. In fact, the initiative is likely to further sideline the Shia community of Saudi Arabia, who account up to 15% of the total population. Thus, Vision 2030 will not improve the lives of all Saudi citizens. The Wahhabi and Sunni communities are set to benefit from more opportunities. And as the social and economic status of the Shia community will remain largely unaffected, they could come to resent the other religious segments even more. So growing economic disparity will pit rival factions across the country against one another. Against the backdrop of such an exacerbation of sectarian tensions, Iran is most likely to seek to gain influence with the Shia community of Saudi Arabia. How far Tehran will go is uncertain.
Although the Vision 2030 initiative has set admirable goals, policymakers in Riyadh will need to find a balance between social spending, public outcry, budget deficits, as well as sectarian and foreign interests, if the initiative has any hope of succeeding. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. Credit goes to our contributors on Patreon for giving us the means to research and produce original content like this. If you enjoy our videos and you want to chip in, or if you're looking for interesting perks like PDF files and early access, visit our community page on patreon.com slash Caspian Report. You can make a pledge for as little as a dollar a month and all the funds will help to keep our channel independent and self-sustained. For now, thank you for your time and sarol.